Hi, in this video, I'll talk about not signaling pathway. And this video is an overview. I'm not going to give you extreme details about the signaling pathway, but I have a different video on that, which would be a lot more details. But in this video, what we would learn is the basic concept behind the not signaling and the context in, in which not signaling is so important. So not signaling, unlike other signaling, is very different because not signaling is a intercellular signaling. So it involves two cells. One cell would express notch, which you can think about a extracellular receptor, and other cell would express the ligand. And this ligand is known as delta. Delta is very different from other soluble ligands. Delta is a transmembrane protein. So it's a membrane-bound ligand. It's not a soluble ligand. So just like any other signaling pathway, the first step of the signaling is interaction between the receptor and ligand. That means interaction between notch and delta. Now, let us talk about a little bit about the structure of notch and delta. Both notch and delta has EGF repeats. In case of notch, the intracellular domain contains an chiron repeat and also a PEST domain for its degradation by E3 ubiquitin ligation. So, when notch and delta interact with each other, there is a protease, which is known as Adam, cleaves notch at its extracellular domain and transmembrane domain interface. This particular cleavage type is known as S2 cleavage. As a result, notch extracellular domain is freed out, but it's still interacting with the delta. But the other portion is hanging from the membrane. The intracellular domain is hanging from the mem membrane. It's not free yet. There is another complex known as gamma secretase, which chops off the notch intracellular domain from the transmembrane domain. And as a result, NICD is free. On the other hand side, the notch and delta which has which are which has interacted with each other in the other cell is about to be endocytosed. However, the NICD can be internalized into the nucleus it can migrate to the nucleus inside the nucleus it is known to give rise to transcriptional changes inside the nucleus it interacts with mastermind cfl and cbf1 which are all coactivators and that leads to defined transcriptional program out of many target genes of the not signaling pathway Famous ones are P21, cyclin D1, or CMYK. And if you can understand from this particular gene name, all of these genes are important for cell division and cell cycle progression. So all the, these things lead to cellular proliferation, right? And that's why in context of cancer, notch signaling is found to be heavily altered. Increased notch signaling would increase the cellular proliferation and lead, might lead to cancer. Now, notch signaling is not only interesting or important in terms of cancer or disease aspect, it is fundamental signaling underlying development. In case of brain development, we know in mouse brain or in mammalian brain, the ventricular zone is populated with stem cells. And they are, in high, they are highly proliferative and they are basically progenitors for neurons. Now, these stem cells are maintained in a proliferative state by notch signaling. That is why when notch is mutated in those mouse, the stem cells of the ventricular zone differentiates into neurons prematurely. There is a burst of neurogenesis and then it's over. And that leads to cognitive impairment in these mouse. Now, in context of immune system, not signaling is very important. Especially, it is important in context of how T cell or B cell lineage com commitment takes place. We know that T cell or B cell, everything starts from hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell, which give rise to common lymphoid progenitor. Now, this common lymphoid progenitor, one hand side, it can give rise to B cells, and other hand side, it can give rise to T cell precursor. Now, T cell precursor, you know, would ultimately give rise to a mature T cell. Now, the question is, when does the lineage commitment take place? Striking observation from mouse model has shown that notch one gain of function mouse has uh, all the 
common lymphoid progenitor committed to a T cell lineage. So the gain of function leads to T cell fate. Whereas in the loss of function or in the knockout situation, you find B cells present in the thymus. In thymus, you would normally expect T cell to be present. But in this notch one conditional knockout, huge amount of B cells are found in the thymus. That all these evidence together suggests that T cell lineage commitments requires notch signaling. Over several decades of research now tells us that inside the thymus there are thymic epithelial cell which interacts with the T cell at its double negative stage. And at this stage, the T cell express notch, whereas the thymic epithelial cell express uh, delta. Now, this notch and delta interaction between T cell and thymic epithelial cell leads to their lineage commitment and they are never going to get back to a B cell state. From now on, they are committed to become a T cell. Now, if we compare notch signaling with other signaling pathways like GPCR signaling or MAP kinase signaling, we would see a striking difference. And the striking difference is the modulability. Apparently, you might think that. Because G both GPCR signaling and MAP kinase signaling has several steps. And at several steps, there are opportunity to modulate this signaling or control the gain of this signaling. But if you look at the notch signaling pathway, the NICD directly migrate to the nucleus and give rise to transcriptional changes. You might think that, okay, notch signaling pathway is not that much modulable or it's not fine tunable. But this I thought might not be true. It turns out notch signaling is heavily tuned and its gain can be controlled, but in a different way. So let's look at it. So imagine there are like different ligands for notch receptor and there are different kind of notch receptor at itself right and their interaction affinity is very different for example dll1 and jag1 has very low affinity compared to dll4 and this differential affinity gives rise to differential transcriptional programs which leads to different fate commitment or different identity in different cells so two important factors we should consider which might lead to differential outcomes. One is the affinity of receptor ligand interaction. And second, the time duration by which the receptor is interacting with the ligand. All these factors or a combination of both can give rise to different signaling outcome. In order to understand that better, we need to take a live example from Drosophila. In Drosophila, the hairs are known as bristle. And if we look in details, these hair cells are actually a combination of four cells hair cell socket cell seed cell and neuron now all these things are born from a common progenitor which is sensory organ progenitor which give rise to two intermediate progenitors which are p2a and p2b which ultimately gives rise to all these four cell types now question is from one single entity how four different identities could be produced and how not signaling is involved in that it turns out in the sensory organ progenitor, a protein, NUMP, is at very high level and it is asymmetrically distributed and it is propagated also via asymmetric division. So, it is what happens is NUMP is distributed at, to the one region of the progenitor and that's why one of the daughter gets high level of NUMP, other daughter gets low level of NUMP. And it is true for these neurons as well, which has very high level of numb. And it is known that numb inhibits notch. So if you look at the progenitor state of this neuron and the sheath cell, we would see in the neuron the numb level is pretty high. And as expected, notch level would be low. So in the neuron precursor, the delta level would be high. On the other hand side, the receiver cell, which is the seed cell, which express notch. Now, this notch signaling in the receiver cell out of many product it would first transcribe notch itself and increase the level of notch but decrease the level of delta now if you look at these two cells we can clearly understand in the left hand side the seed cell precursor has higher level of notch compared to the neuron whereas the neuron has neuronal precursor has higher level of delta compared to the uh, seed cell precursor so this differential level of notch and delta concentration inside these cells would ultimately lead to differential outcome by different transcriptional uh, 
programs, right? And that's how diversity is generated during the stages of development. And it's a beautiful mechanism which tells us from one entity how diversity could be achieved. So this was the overview of this uh, concept. I hope you enjoyed this concept. And if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Do let me know how you like my videos. And in a second video, I'll talk about all the nuts and bolts of uh, not signaling. So stay tuned. Thank you.